This is Shira Rubinoff, president of Cybersphere, a Futurum Group company. We're on the road with 6.5 Media here at Broadcast Alley, and I have a pleasure to be with Jim McGann, VP of Strategic Alliances for Index Engines. Jim, what a pleasure to be with you here today. Yeah, it's great to spend some time with you, Shira. Jim, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for Index Engines. Um, I'm the Vice President of Strategic Alliances. I work with partners. We sell our product today mostly through partnerships, where it's integrated with storage partners or security partners or data protection partners. So I'm responsible for those relationships. Wonderful. So Jim, can you please give our audience a little bit of a brief description about Index Engines and how you relate and how you connect to the security industry? Sure, yeah. So the security industry, I mean, this is my first RSA, so Welcome. it's just vast. It's incredible yeah. what's going on back there, but it's overwhelming. And a lot of the vendors there and a lot of the technology there is trying to prevent an attack. Correct. Um, so there's a lot of that, which is, which is an admirable task, and I, I'm not envious of what they're doing. Um, but then there's also a lot of data protection vendors that are protecting the data and making copy of the data. Sure. But what we found is that really no one's checking to see if the data is good. Is it recoverable? When you do get attacked, again, it's not if, it's when, as they say. Exactly. But when you do get attacked, what is your recovery plan? And if you're relying just on your backups, how do you know the data in the backups is, is good? So what we've done is we have a capability to check the integrity of the data, make sure the data in the backups or snapshots is good and is available for recovery. So as you read about all these organizations that are down from an attack yep. and they spend weeks or months trying to recover, that's not the time you want to figure out if your data has integrity. <laughs> you want to be doing that as an ongoing practice during every day, during the data's replication or protection, make sure it has integrity so that you can recover and you can recover quickly. Well, that's super important. Certainly, I speak to a tremendous amount of CISOs and organizations all the time. And we talk about being proactive in our cybersecurity state and backups, number one topic, right? You have to have the proper backups. But as you right. said, what are the backups and are right. they, do they have integrity? Is there a problem? Have the adversaries actually hit the backups right. to even freeze the companies in a worse right. state that the ransomware attack they were hit with is nothing compared to what's coming next? Right. Yeah. So... Organizations think data protection mm -hmm. can easily flip a switch and become cyber protection. Correct. It's very different. A yes. fire and a flood is very different from, you know, bad actors attacking your data and corrupting your data. So they need to react to that. They need to think differently about it. Um, if you read about, um, there's many examples, but the British Library was attacked. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken them six months to rebuild the network infrastructure before they could restore data. If they were a public company, they would be long gone and out of business. Companies can't afford that kind of strategy. They need to think about the data. They need to protect the data, but also make sure the data has integrity. If the data is bad and you're making copies of it in a snapshot or a backup or replicating it, you can't expect it to be good when you go to recover it. It's going to still be bad. And then you're just going to struggle to find where is the last good version of data. That's not exactly. a question you should be asking. Well, certainly it's not that there's this backup of the data and it's sitting in some vault somewhere. It's updated all the time right. because it needs to be. You have to have the latest version. Right. So how do you know that's perfectly secure? So that's very, very important. Yep. And you've had a lot of, uh, you had a lot with CyberSense. And what is your approach to data security itself? And when yeah. we talk about data security, I mean the whole encompassing of data security. Mm -hmm. Data is king. The security around it right. from every angle. Yeah. So... As you said, data is king. It ultimately comes down to the data. It is, yeah. is your Active Directory, is your SAP HANA database, is your Oracle database, are your user files available? Um, and, and can they be restored? And do they have integrity? I mean, there's a lot of talk about data resiliency, cyber resiliency, storage resiliency, but we talk about data integrity. Does it have integrity? Can it be restored? With CyberSense, which is our, our core product, um, what we're doing is we're, we're checking data, we're checking the integrity of the data using AI-based machine learning uh, that's content-based that inspects inside. So we know based on our research that the, the variants that are being used today are much more sophisticated. Um, they're using AI to build the variants. They're very sophisticated, they're hiding their tracks, they're doing intermittent encryption, they're using algorithms that have low impact on compression rates of the, of the backups or the snapshots. They know exactly what to do. What we're doing with, with AI and machine learning is really outsmarting what they're doing by looking for patterns of behavior that are indicative of the bad actors 
um, and inspecting it on a daily basis through either a snapshot or a backup um, and making sure that when the customer does that replication that they know it's good and they, ha they have confidence that they have a copy that they can recover and, and really even minimize their, their time to recovery significantly versus trying to understand where is the good copy of data. Right. Well, that's super important. Certainly when they talk about being proactive in your cybersecurity stance and when they talk about what you need to do should and not if, it's when right. a cyber attack occurs, right. where is that data sitting right. and how do you recover it and what means do you have to get there right. and where is your exactly. area of, of just focused on the place that it is secure and it is okay. Right. And when you look at RSA, I know it's your first RSA right. here and welcome. I know it's quite the security conference yes. and they say it's the biggest one of the year. Yeah. A lot of companies, a lot of mm -hmm. people, a lot of CISOs, right. tremendous amount of media. Right. What do you hope to accomplish here at the conference? Well, we, we've been working mostly with the, the data storage and the data protection vendors and we've had a lot of great success there. Um, in conversations that we have um, at end user sites with the security teams, they, they see all the telemetry data that we have in cyber sheds. Sure. So for example, when a customer gets attacked and say there's you know 50,000 or 100,000 files that have been corrupted and impacted by a ransomware attack, within CyberSense, the telemetry data tells you the IP address of the servers that were impacted, the time and date of modification of the files, the full file name, the full path. All that information is, is very rich in terms of the fingerprints or the evidence of what the bad actors have done. Um, most of our customers feed that into SIM or source systems to do further analysis on that. So for example, if they say, hey, these, these four servers were corrupted, these are the specific files, so there's a listing of all the specific files or databases that were corrupted, you can do some predictive analytics, say, what did network traffic look like right before that happened? Because that's unusual behavior. Certainly. Um, and it's indicative of a bad actor. And if we see that type of behavior again, shut that activity down because it's not a normal user activity. So. We see opportunity with, with these organizations that are scattered all about <laughs> San Francisco today, that there's, there's partnership opportunities, there's value in, in together we would be better in terms of helping be proactive. Again, CyberSense is more reactive after the attack, but the information can be used to help prevent future attacks. So we see partnership opportunities with a lot of these vendors here. Certainly, and when you identify and you isolate, do you also fix the problem? Or is that something you do with pro with partners and partnerships? So you look at it as one plus one equals three, because as exactly. you mentioned, we are better together. And that's a different yes. shift yes. in the cybersecurity mm -hmm. landscape and companies as a whole. Exactly. I, I think we are better together. Um, but obviously, you know, after the attack occurs, um, you know, customers will, will know what the variant, what the ransomware was used. And, and you have the ability within CyberSense to upload signatures or use Yara rules to say, is the bad stuff there? Because you don't want to recover and then recover the, you know, the ransomware exactly. back in production. So, yeah. And that has happened so that's all there. quite a few that, times. That, yes. it, it happens all the time. Yeah. So, um, so it has the ability to, to not recover that information. But the, you know, we're not recreating what a lot of these vendors are doing to try to prevent an attack. We're assuming it's going to happen. Yes. And we're assuming that you need to know where your last good version of data is to be able to recover but when you do recover to know that you're not recovering, you know, some of the, you know, executables that will need to be recovered, right? Well, that's wonderful. And I'm sure our audience really enjoyed learning about Index Engines yeah. and yourself as well. Yes. And I always ask my interviewees for a cybersecurity tip. It could be a cybersecurity business tip, <laughs> something that might be focused on a business or focused on just the everyday person, because there's a lot out there today that we deal with. And it's always important to hear from industry leaders right. from their points of view. So please yeah. share with our audience something. <laughs> something like change your password. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's an important, I don't know, why don't you tell yeah. us why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've ever been attacked, you know that, that they're, you know, you know your, your children's name or your pet's name or your street address is not a good password. But I, 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 think, I think what we're doing with data is important to be able to say, if the data is important to you as a person, Yep. Like your photos are being, you know, there are ransomware attacks that are attacking people's phones and sure. encrypting their photos. Yep. You would pay $50 to unencrypt your photos and, and, and people would do that. So, I mean, if information is important to you, think about how you protect it, how you copy it, how you safeguard information. And if it gets corrupted or encrypted or replicated or, you know, stolen, um, think about what that means to you. And if it's going to be devastating, then, then you need to change your behavior and, and think about... Uh, how to protect against that 
as an organization or a person, right? I love that. That's almost like being the CEO of your own self and being yes. secure across your own personal self right. as well as an organization. Exactly. So Jim, it was lovely speaking yeah. to you again and I'm sure glad we had a chance to sit down together here at the RSA conference. Yep. Look forward to talking to you anytime. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. And thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back shortly. Bye.